Dick Clark with the end of the century, new eve, whatever you call it. And it is, <laughs> it is 11 o'clock here, and we're celebrating the end of the 18th century. You, woo, woo. And the 18th, no, don't do that, no. Sorry, but you know. End of the 18th century, for the past, or next hour, as you call hour, we will be going over past music and sin and faith and all that. <laughs> Sir, that's root beer. <laughs> we'll be going over the 18th century and um, enjoy. I'm Rick Damlin, and I'm here with Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart. Wolfgang, what would you like to talk about? Rick Damlin, I would like to talk about 18th century music. It all started with Baroque. Baroque was a time of Bach and Handel. Oh, Handel. Is this Handel? Was he a composer? A composer of music? Well, Handel, yes, he was a uh, musical composer. He was a good friend of Bach, also a Baroque composer. And uh, he was known basically for his oratorios. And uh, his most famous one would be, uh, would have to be Messiah. His oria, oratorio Messiah. Yeah. What about Bach? Was Bach a composer of music? Bach was also a very important composer of the Baroque time. He, uh, he portrayed the Baroque style of music very well by using very complex music, uh, style of music. It was very loud and it was very powerful. And uh, the music was very complex with many different parts. Not one part was played the same. Uh, on account of this complexity, Baroque music was often accused of uh, being intellectual, I might recall. But the Bach's magnificent organ fugues uh, made he made Bach provide an illustration of what Baroque really was like. His uh, organ fuse was what basically described him as a Baroque composer. Uh, Bach seems like a very talented composer. Well, what would you say his most famous work was as a, another composer looking in? I would have to say, most definitely, Jay-Z Joy of Man's Desire. Definitely. Yeah. But of course, that would never compare to the music you make. You make beautiful music. I just wanted to compliment you because I cry when I hear it. Yes, this, uh, with me, I, I believe, uh, I moved from the Baroque period to the Classical period. Whew, got some hair in my face. Sorry. Um, yes, uh, the music now, I, I single-handedly, I think I developed very well was a, a kind of music that was more simple and uh, not as complex as as the Baroque period music was. It was, uh, it was a lot simpler, lots of many parts that were the same, many harmonies that were uh, easily, easily played, but many, many, many long years. Now what's the unique thing you added? What, what did you change? What did you revolutionize in music? I'm not so sure I changed music, but uh, I single-handedly developed the piano concerto, which was a. Uh, it was very clear and uh, it was very balanced with uh, lots of. It was very transparent. Which, same thing as clear, and uh, it was very uncomplicated harmonies. Very, it was really easy to follow, and uh, that's what uh, basically classifies what uh, the classical style was. Piff. Enough about these other composers. 
I don't want to ask you to praise yourself because I know you're sort of humble. You're a humble man. Well, I just want to ask you, what do you think your most famous, most important, greatest, best work of music was? I'm not going to say best, but my most popular would have to be Ina Kleiner Knock Music, and no, I'm not going to spell it. Uh, <laughs> you crack me up, Wolfie. <laughs> oh. Now, I've been hearing a lot about, there's more than just those styles, there's another one. Yes, besides me, which is, I am very important and very good, there's also a... Uh, the Romantic style, which came around the same time as me, and uh, the most popular and most uh, the greatest Romantic composer of that time would be, have to be Beethoven. Yes, Beethoven. Beethoven. I've heard of him. Can you please explain a little more about him? Yes, Beethoven. He was a very important composer for the Romantic style. Probably the greatest. He's uh, what described him as a Romantic composer would have to be his fifth and sixth symphony. He used program music, mottos, and he totally broke away from the traditional symphony. By uh, He broke it up into little sections, and he totally made it his own. Any more thoughts about the romantic style of music that you have shown us? Anything else you want to tell everyone, the viewers at home? The rocking New Year's Eve? Yes, for all you didn't know, the romantic style was more unique and individualistic, and uh, it brought more power and force and loudness and emotion it was very I should have went for it I should have been a romantic but I didn't classic is cool and uh, romantic is probably somewhat the stuff you hear today this has been Brick Tamlin with Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart back to you thanks Brick you know I was thinking no century is perfect. Like, no one's perfect. There's, like, clashes, and there's... Our social structure is, like, the 18th century is kind of, like, you know, not good. And there's many taxes, and... Taxes, I think taxes. Taxes. And, uh, peasant revolts and... St oh, wait, that's not my wig. Hold on. I'm Dick Clark, and this is Queers Rockin' End of the Century Eve. Now, there were three estates in this past century, and other centuries before that. The, these estates were the clergy, the nobles, and the peasants. The peasants had the least amount of power when the nobles and the clergy didn't have to pay any taxes. Now, the nobles they had the most amount of power. They had more power than the clergy. The essence of nobility was far more than a class in a social structure. It was a way of life only obtained by birth and in some cases purchasing their position. Most of the peasants that lived in the countryside lived in villages and the peasants that lived in the cities were known as the middle class and the artisans. Now, the urbanites were richer than the country folk in France, Italy, and Prussia. Not to be confused with Russia. They sound very similar, but they are no, no way alike. A major cause of social tension was France's huge population in the 18th century. It boomed up to 20 million people, which is ginormous. The peasants were upset because the other two states were exempt from paying taxes, where they made up most of the money the government got from tax for its revenue. In England and France, peasants began to revolt in the 18th century because nobles made them pay dues. During the summer of 1789, thousands and upon thousands of commoners attacked anything that belonged to the lordship, houses, property, and deeds that summoned that they work the land and pay the nobles.
In July of 1789, the peasants of Europe expected to attack from Louis XVI's army. So they stormed the Bastille prison for our ammo and then burned it to the ground. <coughs> now the Bastille was a symbol of nobility and power, but not their power. Dick Clark. And that's the end of the century, of the 18th century. Um, now let's just we learn something and uh, let's go count down for the ball drop. Here we go. Three, two, one. Happy New Year, century. I love you. I love you, man. I love you. Mom, I'm on TV. I love you. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy New Century. Oh, it's the 19th century. Love you! Music. I just wanted to compliment you because I cry when I hear it. It's amazing.